Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be giving you a beginner's guide to using Adobe Premiere Pro 2023. Okay, so before we open up Premiere Pro, it's important that you download the same video content that I'll be using throughout this tutorial. And we need to organize that content in some way. So if I open up this folder on my desktop, you can go ahead and create a similar folder. I've called my one Adobe Premiere Pro 2023 Beginners Tutorial. So you can call that folder Project One or whatever you would like to call it. But inside that folder, you want to create another folder called Assets. Right, and all of our content will be stored in this folder called assets and inside assets we've got other subfolders we've got audio images text and video so i'm going to show you how to download some content but i want you to create that same structure and then use that same structure for all the future projects that you create this way your content will be more organized okay so inside of this text folder i've got this little notepad file so you can store any text content that you want inside of your text folder you might have some like youtube scripts or some text or some content for your video you can put any text-based content in here and inside here you've got audio so i've got my audio file in here i've got images and i've got subfolders for the images as well i'll explain that in a moment and then i've got videos with all the video clips so inside of that notepad file here this little notepad file you can see here i've got links to all of the different content that i'm going to be using throughout this tutorial so i would like you to also go and download um the same content so you can follow the tutorial more carefully you can follow exactly the same so i'm going to copy this link for this video clip you can see all the videos in here i'll put links to all of that stuff in the youtube description let's go ahead and open up the web browser and we're going to go to that link and it's of this uh, planet earth so I'm going to click on the drop down menu and select 4HD here. So click on this little drop down option, select 4HD 1920 by 1080 and then click download selected file. Right, Click that and it will download that video clip at that resolution. And you need to repeat that for all of the video clips. So just do that same process for all the video clips. For the audio, we're going to go to the YouTube audio library and you need a Google account to log into here. You don't need a YouTube channel, but you need a Gmail account, right? So if you've got a Gmail account, you should be able to access this using your Gmail account. And once you get inside of there, you want to copy this piece of text. It's called in the throw and you want to search for that. So let's go ahead and try and search for that. Here it says search for search the audio library. So we'll paste that in and hit enter and then you'll see the track that we're going to download. So just go ahead and click this download button here and that will download the audio. And then for the images, I've created subfolders. So if we just have a look at the directory structure here, you'll see all of the video content. So all of these videos, I've downloaded them all and placed them all in here. And then for all of the audio, where well, there's only one audio track, I've grabbed that track and I've placed it into this folder called audio. And then the, the, the images, I've created subfolders. So I've got eagles, gorillas, snakes, and tigers. So you can see down here, I've got snakes, tigers, gorillas, and eagles. So if we just copy one of these links, let's just copy this one, and we'll go back to our web browser. We'll paste in that link. We'll take you back to the Pexels website, but this time we're downloading a picture, and we're just gonna click free download here. You don't need to click the drop down or do anything here. Just go ahead and click free download, and then just repeat that for all of the images. But make sure, you don't have to, but make sure, I would advise that you create subfolders so that all of the snakes are stored in the snake folder, all of the eagles are stored in the eagle, and so forth. So you'll find links to all of this content, and it's all freely available. There's no copyright or any sort of issues like that. You'll find links to all of the content inside of the YouTube description. Okay, let's go ahead and open up Premiere Pro. 2023 so i'm going to boot up the application as if it's the first time you're ever seeing this software so let's just boot it up straight from the beginning and we can go through all of the different steps to make sure that we follow um, uh, some clear guidelines and some clear instructions right so premiere pro is booting up it takes a little bit of time on my computer but we'll be patient and then we can see what we call the splash screen right so let's just um, minimize this a little bit so you can see it a bit better so this is the splash screen here. Let's just resize it a bit. So here's the splash screen. It allows you to access all your previous projects. If you're working on something before, you can access them from here. You can go and start tutorials and go and check out some nice tutorials and you can learn more about Premiere Pro, but we're gonna go for a beginner's guide, right? So the first thing we wanna do is click new project up here, new project, this blue button. So we'll go ahead and click that. And we need to give our project a name here. So project name, 
we'll give it a name here so let's just call this planet earth so that's my project or with this video tutorial or the video we're going to create is about planet earth so let's just spell it correctly planet earth and then it's asking us for a location where do we want to store this project so it would make sense that we store it in the same folder on the desktop right so I would advise that you don't really save all your projects on your desktop you should really save it in my documents or somewhere else on your computer try and keep your desktop clean um, but I've only placed it there just for ease of access for this tutorial so I'm going to click on the drop down option here and then click choose location and I'm going to go to this PC let's go to desktop and we'll go into this Premiere Pro and we're going to select this folder here so this is the same folder that's on my desktop let's go ahead and select that and then all we need to do is click the create button down here so once we click that create button be a bit patient because it's going to boot up the software it's going to prepare everything so this takes a few seconds for Premiere Pro to boot up and now you can see it's booted up okay so the first thing we need to do is make sure that you see exactly the same layer as I see in Premiere Pro to do that let's go to windows let's go to workspace you can see all these different workspaces right some are sort of suitable for audio some are suitable for creating captions some are suitable for doing like color grading and effects and all sorts of different things but we want to make sure that we see all panels here so select the very top option if you haven't already done that and you should see the layout exactly like this it should look very very similar to what you see on the screen here okay so the next thing we need to do is go to edit preferences and then go to general and inside the general tab here we're going to go to media and in the time code option right here we're going to click on the drop down and set it to start at zero hours zero minutes zero seconds and then zero frames the reason we do this is sometimes when you drag and drop video content into premiere pro the video clip itself will have its own metadata it will have its own time code and that time code might start at some, some obscure number, right? It might start at like 23 frames and 12 seconds or something just a bit random. And it just makes things a lot harder to edit. So I always set the time code to this option here inside the general. The rest of this stuff in here, you can just leave it exactly as it is. Let's go ahead and click OK. OK, so inside Premiere Pro in the bottom left hand corner, we have something called the project bin. This is where we can drag and drop all of our content to reference it from the folder on our desktop. Now, there's a couple of options in here. You can create subfolders in here or sub bins in order to store the content a bit more organized. Right. So if you've got tons of videos, loads of audio, loads of pictures, it might be nice to kind of group them into subfolders. So you can imagine this is like one folder. And if we right click on here and then create a new uh, a new bin here new bin so if we click that we can call this one video right so we just type in video here and then we can right click again and create another new bin and we can call this one audio and then we can right click and then create a new bin and call this one images that way our content is a bit more organized now now we've got video audio and images rather than having all of our content dumped into premiere pro in a single sort of location right so if we open up this video one so just double left click on it and if we just drag this to the side premiere pro and then we can open up this folder on my desktop and inside of here now you can see we've got the new project it's created these subdirectories premiere pro and then we've got a folder called assets which stores all of our content so everything is now organized and we can go to video select all of the video clips and then just drag and drop them into this project bin so now all of the video clips will sit inside here let's just uh, make this a little bit bigger so it's a bit easier to see and now we can see all of our video clips in here right and what we'll do is um, close down this bin right so we can just or we can just scrub to the side so if you use your mouse wheel, if you hover over this little bar at the top here and if you move to the left you'll see the, the the original folders here so we've got video and now underneath we've got audio so if we just open up this audio folder and then we can go back here and go to audio and drag that one into here and then if we scrub our mouse again across the top here we can get back to the planet earth main folder and then we can go to images and then we can go back here and go to images and we'll go into this first folder drag these two pictures and you could create subfolders for this but we don't have that many images so it's not worth doing so we'll just drag these in here we've got the snakes we'll select them and drag them and then finally we've got the tigers and we can drag them into here as well so now we've got all of the images in here let's just make sure uh, let's see I think we're missing the tigers let's just drag them again 
so now we've got the tigers in here as well so we don't need to go back to this folder anymore we've got all of our content um, inside of these subfolders in Premiere Pro so if we see if we click um, if we click on this little sort of burger box option here we can click on it and then we can close um, we can close this panel and then we can close the audio one and then we can close this uh, video one as well and then we'll just have our default one this is the media browser here it says media browser over here you can see the projects now you can set it to different views so you can set it to like a folder view you can set it to a thumbnail view if we set it to a folder view and then go into videos just double click on videos these will be shown as thumbnails and you can just click here you can see project planet earth you can go back and you can double click on audio and you can go back here and double click on images and if i stretch this out it might be a little bit easier to see so if i stretch it out you can see the subfolders are listed at the top here now when it's squashed down like this you don't really see it so you can either click here on this little arrow and then you can select between those folders like this right or you can um just click uh, you, you can just use your mouse wheel at the top here roll your mouse wheel to go between them so really we want to be on videos first so i'm going to scrub to the videos which is the video section here let's drag this handle all the way back here we want this bar to be very narrow here right quite narrow because we want to see quite a lot on our timeline so that's how you organize content in Premiere Pro as well so just as we organize it on our desktop in the folder it's worth organizing it in Premiere Pro uh, so that we can separate our assets this is really important when you're working on big video editing projects as well okay so we're pretty much ready now to start doing some video editing I know it's taken a bit of time to get to here but all of this work we've done so far is to organize all of our content so that uh, we have better structure right better structure so if we just roll our mouse back to the project main bin right the, the main bin with all these three subfolders here here's a little tip for you whenever you drag and drop audio or video especially video or images whenever you drag and drop them in Premiere Pro the very first clip that you drag and drop that's what the video content up here is going to be the resolution now when I told you to download the videos I said to download them all in 1080p right so 1920 by 1080 um, here's a little tip for you if you right click down here and then create a new item and call it just a color mat yeah color mat here and then we can set it at 25 frames a second so we can change the frame rate here for this color mat but we can also set the resolution so we can set it to 1920 by 1080 and then we'll just go ahead and go ahead and click OK and we can choose a color so I'm just going to say black for now and it's going to be called color mat black and just click OK so we've got this color mat black here so I'm just going to drag and drop that into Premiere Pro and the reason why I do that we can delete it now anyway we don't need it but we'll just drag and drop it once and as default it's going to create a resolution screen resolution which is 1920 by 1080 here so the default resolution in Premiere Pro is now 1920 by 1080 this will save you a lot of headache later because if you drag and drop a video clip that is at some strange resolution then Premiere Pro will use that resolution as the default and you don't really want that right you want it to be all of the content to be set to 1920 by 1080 so that's quite that's a tip for you and you can also use that as a black background if you want to use it as a black background okay so let's go ahead and click on videos here so let's double click on the video folder uh, double click on it and we can see all the different video clips and if we roll our mouse over the video clip you can scrub through the video clip and you can kind of see what was going on in that clip and then that gives you an idea maybe how you want to sequence things this is all about planet earth so it's about animals and the planet and so forth so the first thing i want to do is drag this planet so i'm going to click on that clip and drag and drop it onto the timeline here and two things that we should always try and set as default in Premiere Pro. One is the uh, snap to timeline tool. This one is linked sections, right? So I'll explain that a little bit later. But the snap to timeline tool, whenever you drag different video clips onto Premiere Pro, they will snap together a bit like a magnet, right? Two clips together. That I'll explain that in a little bit more detail. So right now we're zoomed quite high into this timeline. So we can only see a small part of the timeline. And what we want to do is zoom out so you can grab this little handle down here and you can drag it to the left or right if you drag it to the right it will zoom out or zoom in should i say and if you drag it to the left it will zoom out so we want to drag it to the right 
here or you can actually hold down the alt key on your keyboard and use the mouse wheel so the shortcut to zoom in and out is holding down the alt key on your keyboard and you can go ahead and use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out so we want to zoom out a bit because this video clip is actually a bit too long so we want this introduction imagine this is the introduction so how do we actually see video content in Premiere Pro? We can just click on the timeline here. This is a little blue handle. We can drag it and we can see the video playing above here, right? Uh, we can just drag this little blue handle to, to move across the timeline. Or we can press the space bar on our keyboard or we can click this play button. But if you hover over these options, they kind of tell you what to do. So to play and stop, use the space bar and to move frames. Uh, you use the left and right arrow keys. I'll explain that in a moment. But if we hit the space bar, the video will start to play in this header section up here. Now, if the video starts to play a little bit jerky, it's not very smooth, what you can do is click on this drop down here. And right now it's set to half. So it means it's playing at half the native resolution. So it's just kind of compressing it to make it play a little bit smoother. You can set it to full, then it's showing you as full 1080p in here. Or you can set it to like a quarter, then it's a quarter of the resolution, right? So it may look a little bit more pixelated, but when we export from Premiere Pro, it will always we choose the option, what do we want to export as the highest resolution? So this option down here is only for displaying in this little control panel, right? So I normally leave it at half, because my computer can kind of deal with half resolution perfectly fine. And this video clip, if we look at it, it's actually, um, it's quite long, right? It's like 16 seconds long. So we can work out what is the total duration of our video clip so far. We can look over here, it says 16 seconds, right? And this, this little time code here and this one here, they're one of the same thing. So when we scrub through, we can see it's at 12 seconds and four frames. We see 12 seconds and four frames here, but the video clip or the total duration of our content so far is 16 seconds. So we want to edit this video clip and we're going to make it shorter because 16 seconds for an intro is way too long, right? So we were going to probably make it like uh, five seconds and then we're going to do some sort of fade afterwards as well. So to edit this video clip, there's two ways to do it. You can see this little purple section down here, right? If we double left click on it, double left click, you'll see another video player pop up here. And this video player on the left hand side is only for the purpose of this video clip right here. And there's a little blue handle here that you can drag and you can drag across this video clip and you can do something called mark in and mark out. So you can see the time here on the left hand side. So as we scrub through this video clip, it's 16 seconds long and we want it to be five seconds. So we could leave it at the beginning, but let's just, as a good example, let's just say that we cut it at two seconds. So we're going to mark it here. So we're going to use this tool here, mark. So we're going to mark in here. So we'll click this one right here, mark in. And it's going to get rid of this content here. Can you see? It's not deleted it. It's just saying don't use it. So there's a gap here and you can see there's a gap here now. And if we want to make it uh, five seconds long, we need to scrub all the way over to uh, seven seconds, right? So two plus the uh, five would give us a total time length here of seven so when you're moving your mouse like this it's a little bit hard to get it to exactly seven seconds right now it's seven seconds and ten frames so you can use the arrow keys the left and right arrow key on your keyboard will move it frame by frame so we're going to set it to exactly seven here and then we can mark it out here mark out so now we've got the duration here we're only using this part of the total 16 seconds we're using the five seconds here right although it says seven seconds that's the position of the handle but we cut two seconds here and then we cut the rest of it off and we've got five seconds here now you can take this video clip and you can drag it wherever you want we're going to drag it so that we clear this gap here we're going to get rid of this gap right here so we just drag it to the beginning right so if we go back now and then hit the space bar we can see it playing over here and it's only going to play for five seconds and we'll add some sort of title and make it nice in some sort of way afterwards so i'm going to do something something else what i'm going to do is click on this video clip and i'm going to hit the delete key on my keyboard the delete key i'm going to get rid of it and i'm going to drag that same video clip back onto the timeline so there's another way to edit the content and that's to use the cutting tool on the uh within the the timeline here and that's what i normally use i normally use the cutting tool most of the time sometimes i use the cutting tool or the the marking and out up here but majority of the time i'm using the cutting tool here so if i scrub across this video clip and i want to get to that same two seconds right so i'm i'm checking the time up here right here it's at two seconds and three frames so i'm going to use the left arrow and go back 
to exactly two seconds and I'm going to use the cutting tool so you can press the letter C on your keyboard C for Charlie you can press that letter C um, so I'm going to press the letter C and that brings up the cutting tool and then I'm going to click on the timeline here to cut at that exact position and then I'm going to leave the cutting tool active because I'm going to scrub all the way across to seven seconds so right now I'm on seven seconds and four frames so I'm going to use the left arrow to get to exactly seven seconds and then I'm going to click on the uh, the timeline again to cut again all right so I've cut this beginning part and I've cut the end part and I've got the content in the middle that I want to keep now I need to move back to the selection tool which is this arrow tool here or you can press the letter V V for Victor on your keyboard right letter V so letter C and V are quite useful tools C and V are quite common tools that you use quite frequently so remember those shortcuts C to cut and V is for the selection tool um, I'm going to click on the end clip here and then hit the delete key and I'm going to click on this beginning clip and hit the delete key and I'm going to drag this clip click on it left click on it hold down the left mouse button and drag it to the beginning so we've done the same editing process but in two different ways and I prefer to use the timeline to do the editing using the cut tool it just saves me having to go up here and marking and out just use the cut tool here it's much quicker but it's either or you don't have to you know whichever way you feel more comfortable um, it works the same way now if I double click on this video clip here double click on it you can see when I double click on it I no longer see the full 16 seconds right because I've cut the video clip I didn't mark it in and I mark it out I've actually cut the whole video clip here right so you only see the five second duration so that's one thing to know but you can still go to the left if I drag this to the middle somewhere like here I can still go to the left hand side and you see this little red icon appear then I can left click and drag out the video clip again right and then it will be its full duration now you can see it's 14 seconds it's increased here and I can go to the left hand side and drag it to the left side here and now you see the full 16 seconds here so when you cut and delete content from the clip you're not deleting it permanently you're just kind of marking it in and marking out in a, in a very similar way right so I'm going to press Control and Z that will undo that last step where I dragged it and I'm going to press Control and Z one more time and that will uh, undo that last step so we're back to that original clip if you want to redo something you press Control shift and Z so Control shift and Z is to redo and Control z is to undo so you can see those shortcuts up here undo and redo those are quite important shortcuts to remember as well um, Control z is to undo and Control shift and z is to redo yeah so now we can take that same video clip and drag it all the way to the beginning of the timeline here so it's going to be the very first thing that we see okay so right now we have this one video clip and we see the video straight away so whenever we if we scrub right to the beginning of the timeline or well, you can press um, the home key the home key and the end key on your keyboards take you to the very beginning of the timeline and the very end of the video clip so that you've got this home and end on your keyboard so you can use home to get to the very beginning that's quite a, that's a good shortcut right and the the the, um, the, the content st starts straight away there's no fade in it so whenever you're watching stuff on YouTube or you're watching a film in the cinema or at home or TV programs or whatever it is normally there's some sort of fade to black right so normally it's like a black frame and it will fade in so we can do that in Premiere Pro we're going to go ahead and click on video transitions here so make sure you've got your windows workspace all panels enabled and you'll see effects here and under effects you'll see video transitions and then you'll see dissolve so there's lots of different video transitions in here but you'll see one that is called cross dissolve and this is the one that I normally use so what you do is you left click on it hold down the left mouse button and drag it to the very beginning of that video clip and then let go now you can see it's black here and when I go ahead and click the play button here it's going to fade in like this and I quite like that fade right like that fade that fade is good so there's other types of transitions I'm going to explain those in a little while but for now we've got this nice little fade and then at some point we're going to fade into another video clip over here on the timeline so let's do that let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and look at the next video clip we want to add so we're in planet earth and we've got these clouds like these floating clouds so I want to drag that onto the timeline drag it onto the timeline and whenever we drag a video clip onto the timeline we can left click on it and when we get close to another video clip it will snap to that video clip and that is this snapping tool active here snap to timeline that or you can press the letter s so letter s will turn it off and on when it's blue it's on right so whenever we drag a video clip to another one 
it's going to snap and if we turn it off um, it's very difficult to get them to sit side by side and you don't want any sort of gaps sometimes you can have really really tiny gaps in between content so if I hold down the alt key and zoom in zoom right in between these two video clips sometimes you might have this really little tiny gap like this and there's actually a gap there right if I drag it out a little bit there's a tiny little gap here let's just drag it out a little bit let's try and drag it out let's say this little gap here right so if I zoom right out to here you probably won't see that gap when you zoom very very far out but if you use the snapping tool this snapping tool and if we take that clip and drag it back to the other one and then if we zoom back in again there will never be a gap there and you don't want that gap because that would be like a black frame if there's like a gap in between even though you can't see it right it's only like a frame uh, when you're playing the video clip you'll see this little black frame appear in your video content right here you don't want that right between these two pieces of content so leave the snapping tool enabled and drag and drop your clips next to each other and you'll never get that problem so let's zoom back out again and we've got two video clips here and they're both well this first one's five seconds and i want to make every single video clip in here five seconds so this cloud one i wanted to make it five seconds as well we can make it a little bit longer this is entirely your choice right so we know that this video clip ends at seven or ends at five seconds five seconds here on the timeline so we want to move to 10 seconds and cut this video clip so i'm going to move across the timeline and i don't mind the way this starts right it starts pretty nice or you can double click on this video clip here and you could edit on the timeline here so if you want to cut to a certain position like you want to cut in the middle somewhere you can maybe cut something like um let's say i kind of like the way it does the way it's working at the beginning here so we can just scrub across this timeline go to five seconds and we can just mark it out here mark out and now we've got five seconds done there so you can use this tool here or again if we undo that press ctrl and z we can move to the timeline here uh, where we know it's 10 seconds right because the first video clip is five seconds this will be five to ten seconds so that will make this video clip 10 seconds as well then we can press the letter c we can cut it here then press the letter v and select this and delete it so that's one of the two the same job basically right the same job either way around you can do it so when we click the play button we see the planet spinning and then it all of a sudden just jumps to this video clip here and that doesn't look too good so we can use these different transitions so if you just um, click on slide for example and then maybe something like um, this push option and drag it to the beginning of the second time clip or the second video clip here and then move your mouse cursor you can click anywhere on the top of this timeline that moves this blue line this is called the timeline um, cursor and we can click here and then it will move it back to this position then you can click play and then you can see that transition happen right so it's pushing it to one side like this doesn't look that great does it so you can change that you can just minimize these folders and experiment them you've got a like page pill so you can drag this one here on top of the other one and it will switch it to something different now yeah? and you can click the play button and you can see a page pill and you've got all these different transitions in here some look really good some look a bit rubbish um you've got ones like uh like diamond like some sort of iris diamond sort of thing let's see what this one's about you've got like this box and then you've got loads of different ones to experiment right you've got zoom zoom cross zoom and stuff like this let's check that one you've got kind of this cross zoom that that one's pretty cool but me personally i like to just use the cross dissolve cross dissolve so if we go back here and we click play see we've got this nice transition between the two video clips right so that's how we add more transitions in our content and that's how we're going to edit the rest of the content so you've got a good understanding now believe it or not of how to edit content um, and you just need to repeat that throughout all your video clips so we will kind of speed up this process a little bit but let's think about it we've got this planet earth we've got these clouds um, and then do we want to continue with video clips or do we want to maybe use some of the images the audio we're going to deal with later right so maybe what we'll do is um let's just see also one thing to note is you can double click on these video clips inside here right and you can see them a bit more clearly up here so if you're not sh too sure what's going on with these video clips you can always um just double click left click them in here and then you can kind of see the video clips over here as well yeah so i want to kind of um add an animal animal right so we're kind of flying in the clouds 
so maybe it doesn't really matter what we use to be honest um, this is just for video editing. let's use the elephant right so let's drag and drop the elephant onto the timeline now you'll notice one thing that's different when we drag and drop the elephant we've got these two rows here one is audio and then one is video and most of the time when we drag and drop audio depending on what if you filmed it yourself you may want to keep that audio if you didn't film it you may want to get rid of the audio we don't really want any audio on this uh from this video clip so what we're going to do is click on the video clip right click on it and we're going to select uh, unlink here unlink option yeah and when you click that you'll be able to select the audio and the video independently so I'm going to click on the audio and hit the delete key. Now we can get rid of that audio. And I'm just going to click on this uh, elephant picture or this elephant video, right click on it. And I'm just going to say uh, set to frame size. I'm going to click that just to make sure the video clip is exactly the same frame size as the um, content that we're creating. So if you ever drag and drop in something that's like HD resolution, so it's going to be way bigger than this 1080p resolution. And if you see that it's quite zoomed in and it doesn't look right, you can just right click on that and click set to frame size here or scale to frame size kind of the same thing scale to frame size and then it will scale that hd resolution image or video content to here we can we can kind of see that when we when we do some audio uh, sorry some images as well later so we've got this elephant we've got these clouds and then we've got this elephant it's a bit random but it's fine um and we want to edit this so let's just double click on this and we want to make it five seconds, right? So we can mark it in at the beginning here. And we just want to scrub across the timeline to five seconds. Let's see. It would be kind of nice if we saw the other elephants, right? So this is 14 seconds. So let's just set it to like four. And we're going to mark it in here at four, four seconds. And we want it to be five. So let's move across to nine seconds. That would be a total of five seconds here. Kind of wanted to see those other elephants, though, the ones in the background here, right? so this is let's mark it out at um it doesn't it doesn't matter too much so let's just set it to nine frames here right in fact let's do that so that you know how to do that so let's go to 14 seconds and we're going to mark it out here so we're going to mark it out at 14 seconds and we want to go back to nine here and that will be a total of five seconds right nine plus five is 14. So if we mark it in here, we now have a five second duration here. So we can drag this video clip across here and then we can add our cross dissolve. And if we click here, we've got the clouds and then we've got the elephant walking along and we see the kind of the other elephant elephants in the background is what, what we want to see. Okay, let's go ahead and drag another video clip onto the timeline. So let's take this cheetah, let's drag that onto the timeline. You can also see it also has um, an audio track there, right? Now, as we drag more and more content, the timeline or the content on a timeline is increasing. So we can scrub across the timeline by grabbing this tool here and dragging it to the side. Or we can just use our mouse wheel. We can use the mouse wheel as well, right? To move backwards and forwards across this timeline. We can use the mouse wheel. Or we can press the letter H on our keyboard. H for Harry. If we press the letter H, it selects the hand tool here. Then we can grab the hand tool or left click and we can drag across the timeline like this as well. So there's a few different ways to move across this timeline. The one that I normally use is just leave it on the selection tool and just use the mouse wheel, right? It's just nice and easy. But if you've got a very long timeline, then you can actually grab this handle and drag it all the way across the timeline as well. So we want this video clip to be five seconds. So we can go ahead, I think the beginning part is fine. So we've got elephants here and we're at, we should be at exactly 15 seconds right we've got 5 10 15 seconds we can see 15 seconds here so we drag across this timeline to 20 seconds uh, 20 which is here we can use the letter c to cut and we can so i'm going to press the letter c uh, that selects the cutting tool here i'm going to click on the timeline here where this blue line is and then i'm going to press the letter v which will select this tool here then i'll click on this end part and delete it right just delete that end part and now we've got the the cheetah here so then we'll grab the cross dissolve and drag and drop it on here and we've got audio here and again we don't want that audio you may want to keep the audio it's up to you but really there is no audio it's just empty it's just an empty audio file uh, so whoever captured this they deleted the audio but they left an empty audio file here so we can just right click on it unlink it 
and then click on the audio clip and delete it all right so now we've got this other transition here we should see like a nice little transition here let's press Control and s Control and s is to save our work so press Control and s to save or you can go to file save here as well but you try and learn that shortcut Control s so every time you do a piece of work you really want to save your work as you go along okay so we've added quite a few video clips to our timeline so i want to add some images as well we've downloaded some so let's start adding a few images as well let's show you how that works so if you click on this little arrow here this one right here you'll see the different folders that we've got open or they call them in Premiere Pro they're called bins but I like to just call them folders think of them like folders so you've got the main project one at the top here so if you click that one you'll see all of the subfolders or the sub bins that we created and we want to go into the image one but if you've already opened that image one previously you can select it from the top up here or you can click on the arrow and also select it from here if it's already open previously right or you can just double click on it here in the main projects so I'm just going to go ahead and just double click it and we've got all these different images and if we look at this lion i think this is a, it's a tiger right so let's drag this tiger onto the timeline so we drag it onto the timeline we don't see no tiger here it's because the timeline cursor is on is, is over this cheetah it's not over the the lion so i'm going to drag it across and now you can see the lion here now you can only see the bottom of the lion here but if we double click on that picture you can see the whole lion here so why is that this video content, remember, we're making at HD resolution, so it's 1920 pixels, so it's 1920 pixels wide, and it's 1080 high, so it's 1080 pixels high. And if we minimize this for a second, and if we go to this folder, we can see the lion picture here, right, or the tiger picture. And if we roll our mouse over that picture, we can see it's 5,028 by 3,009 pixels. And our video content is 1920 by 1080. So this image is almost like four times larger than the actual video content that we're creating in Premiere Pro. So we need to zoom this image out. We need to zoom it so it fits this better. So the quick way to do that, just to, just to uh, get it roughly the right size, is just to right click on it and then say scale to a frame size. And when we do that, we can see that it scaled it the best that it can to fit inside the frame but we've got these black bars down the side can you see and we never really want that in premiere pro or in our video editing we don't want the black bars now a little tip when you drag and drop content onto the timeline you can see there's a gap here right and if you drag and drop lots of different video content you can close these gaps quite quickly by selecting all of the content or you can press Control and a Control a and you can go to uh let's see i think it's clip no, it's a sequence and then you can select close gap here and then that will close all of the gaps so if you've got loads of video content and you want to close loads of gaps quite quickly you can use that option that's just a little tip for you right so if we click on the uh, timeline here so we can see the tiger over here and then if we um, click on this picture click on this picture here uh, so it's selected right uh, let's click on it. in fact you need to left click so you unselect everything because at the moment when we press Control a everything is selected so if you left click outside and then click on the picture only that one will highlight white around the edge and then we're going to go to window and we're going to go to effects controls uh, effects controls here or press shift and f5 and when we go there we'll see these options here now effects controls are basically like options for every single video clip or audio or uh, image that you add to the to the Premiere Pro timeline right so when you're adding content you can manipulate each one of these these pieces of content the videos or the, the image using the effects controls these are like the fundamental uh, elements for or for your your content right like the width and the height and how far it is zoomed in and rotation and stuff like this so you can see position here where is this where do we want to position this piece of content you can see the scale option here so if we click on scale scale uh the blue the blue text here is written 100 if we left click on it and drag to the right we can zoom in and zoom out right zoom in and zoom out so i want to zoom out or i want to zoom in actually so we get rid of these black bars down the side we don't want to see those so we can zoom in so we're just going to drag to the right we're going to zoom into probably about 111 can you see 111 written here and now we don't see those black bars on the side we don't really want to see those now if we drag back again and go to this video clip we've got the cheetah we can call and then we've got this really still image this image is not doing anything it's very static and one thing to note is whenever you drag and drop um 
um, images into Premiere Pro, if we right click on them and go to speed and duration here, they're always set to five seconds. So it just so happens that um, all our video clips are five seconds. And whenever we drag any image, any type of image into Premiere Pro, as default, it's going to give it a five second duration automatically. That's just kind of potluck for us that we get it at five seconds, right? Um, if we need, if all of these, um, if all of these uh, video clips were six seconds or 10 seconds long and you wanted the image to be the same, you could right click on it, go to speed and duration and change the duration here from five seconds to six seconds, for example, and then click OK. And then it will be six second duration rather than five. But as default, each image you drag in will be five. I'm going to press Control and Z to get it back to five seconds. Remove that extra second that we just added. Now, this um, this uh, image is very still. It's going to be still for five seconds, which is way too long. So you can see when we um, if we if we double click on the uh, the image here, we'll see it in the see it in the playhead over here, right? But then you see all these other options at the top here. So if you click on this little arrow, this little arrow here, you can see the different options in here. And one is going to be called effects controls, right? So we want to go go ahead and click on that, or you can click on the little tab up here, just like you can navigate through the the different folders here. You can navigate through all of the options at the top up here by selecting them from here. So we're only interested in effects control. So let's click on it, and we're going to animate this this image because it's very still. We don't want it to be so still. So I'm going to grab this blue timeline, and this blue timeline is only for this particular image down here. This timeline is for the whole duration of the t or, or this this timeline cursor, the blue one here, is for the whole duration of this. Uh, this this video content all of this content here but this timeline cursor here at the top is only for this particular image right this image itself so i'm going to go right to the very beginning of the image and i'm going to click on this little stopwatch for this scale here scale and this adds a keyframe and what we can do in premiere pro is add one keyframe at the beginning one at the end or add many keyframes and we can tell premiere pro start at this keyframe this is what the picture is going to look like and then end at this keyframe and we're going to adjust it maybe zoom in a little bit or do something and maybe we'll even rotate this slightly right so let's drag this timeline this one here right here we'll drag the cursor all the way to the end here you might see a black frame at the very end so don't worry about that just drag it to the very end and then click on the little dot here and that will add one keyframe at the very beginning and one keyframe at the very end now we can go to the beginning one and maybe we'll just leave it as it is and when you're scrubbing through this timeline you can click on these little arrows here there is go to previous keyframe and go to the end keyframe and we could add keyframes in between as well so maybe i'll show you that on another image but let's just make this one very very simple so i'm going to click on this little arrow here and that takes me to the very end keyframe and i think it would make more sense let's go back one frame it would make sense that maybe this keyframe you can actually drag it back one yeah it's because you want to actually see what's going on here so i'm going to drag it back one frame i don't want it to be on the black frame um, you can use the left arrow key to move it back one frame and then just drag that keyframe you can left click on it and drag it you see so we're just going to drag it to this point on the timeline not on the black frame the one before because now we can actually see what's going on in here and then we can grab this scale tool uh, and just zoom in a little bit right zoom into here to something like this so now when we go back on the timeline here so where we see the cheat if we click the play button now this now this is starting to zoom in a little bit so we've got a bit of motion going on rather than it being very very static right so if we go back to this timeline up here we can see like it's zooming in which is cool but um maybe we want a bit of movement in there so let's go back to the very first keyframe and click on the position stopwatch that adds a keyframe for the first position. And then we can click on this little arrow down here on the scale. We can click go to end keyframe. So it will go to actually this keyframe on the scale here. But that allows us to easily and quickly put a position keyframe there as well. Because it's going to be exactly in the same position, right? And what we will do is um, the position. This will be the left and right. And this will be the up and down. So on the left side, we want to drag it so that it moves towards this direction. So we kind of get an even gap like from the face to the edge here and then from the tail to the edge here. So we're going to drag it just to get it kind of around here. So if we click on the timeline here again on the cheetah and press the space bar, 
now it's zooming in but it's also moving to the left a little bit as well so that gives us a little bit more motion as well and what we might do slightly uh, is go to the timeline here drag to the beginning again and then we're going to click on the, the rotation stopwatch rotation and then we can click on this little keyframe icon here that takes us to this keyframe right here but then that allows us to quickly add another keyframe here for the rotation and then we can go to the very beginning um, we can rotate this uh, tiger just a small amount only like three degrees something very very subtle um, and then when we click the play button it's going to rotate zoom and move all at the same time so this just makes everything look a bit more cleaner right um, rather than just having a still image if you want a still image no problem just put a still image there but if you want to have a bit of motion it takes a little bit of time to add these keyframes but then at least you get some sort of movement rather than it being very very sort of static right one thing we can do is press ctrl a so cl left click up here left click then press ctrl a and when you press ctrl a it's going to select all of the keyframes then you can right click on one of the keyframes can right click on one of them let's see let me let me actually right click on this one um Let's see, maybe you can only do it to two keyframes. Let's, let me just double check. Yeah, I don't think you can do it to all of them at the same time. But what you can do is left click on the first one, hold down the shift key, and then left click on the second one. Then you can right click on this first one and go to temporal interpolation and then set it to uh, Bezier, Bezier here, Bezier. And then you can repeat that for the other ones. I'm pretty sure you can do it to all of them at the same time. So. Let's just left click. We can't really drag and select. So let's just press Control A. Let's just check it. It doesn't really give me the option to do that here, you see? So I'm gonna have to left click on the first one, hold down the shift key and click on this one, then right click and go to uh, Bezier here, Bezier. And then repeat that for this last one. Left click, then hold down the shift key, left click on this one and then right click and then set it to Bezier. So what is Bezier? That basically smooths out. So it will start at normal speed and then when it gets towards the end, it's gonna gradually slow down. And you won't really see that unless you play it. So you can see it starts, but as it gets towards the end, it's gonna slow down gradually. Can you see that slow down? It's, little, it's quite subtle, but if you think of it like, um, it's going straight and then all of a sudden it kind of curves. That's what a Bezier, it's called a Bezier curve, right? So it's kind of slowing down towards the end. So when we click it, we can see that it almost slows down. Um, that just means it just won't be like quite static uh, in terms of its transition. We want it to slow down nicely, right? So we can take the other tiger clip or tiger image and drag and drop that onto the timeline. And then we can see the other picture here. Then we can click on it, right click on it and go to set to frame size. And now we can see it set to the frame size and it's kind of cut here and it's kind of cut here you can see like black here and you can see black over here so let's go ahead and click on this image and then we're going to zoom in so that we get rid of all of the the black frames right um like the black down the side we don't really want to see that and then we can kind of drag him across a little bit maybe or drag him down a little bit to something like we don't want to see the ears and stuff right so somewhere around here Let's drag it down to roughly around here. So we can use the mouse wheel to zoom across this timeline. I'm going to click on the picture. Let's do this one a bit quicker. So I'm going to drag here uh, to the beginning and I'm going to add a position, scale and rotation. I'm going to do all three of them at the same time. And then I'm going to drag all the way across to the end. And I don't want to be on this black frame. I want to be one frame in. So I'm going to press the left arrow key to go one frame in. And then I'm going to add a keyframe here, a keyframe here, and one here. Now I've got keyframes at the beginning, and I've got keyframes at the end. You can kind of see the ones at the beginning here, and you can see the ones at the end here. So let's drag all the way to the beginning, or you can just click this left arrow uh, to go to the previous keyframe, you know, between these two keyframes. And the position, let's just move it slightly. So let's just move it, um, let's move it up slightly, and let's move it to the right slightly. So we, when we move these keyframes, we want to be a little bit subtle, right? We don't want to move it quite a lot because it's, you know, we don't want too much movement, let's say. And then the scale is fine. So we can see the tiger's kind of moving downwards, 
But when we get to this end keyframe, or if we press this right arrow, we can kind of zoom in a little bit more. And maybe we'll move it down slightly. So let's see. So now we can kind of see the tiger zooming in a little bit. And then we can do a rotation. So at the beginning, let's go to the very first keyframe. And then we'll rotate it down slightly like this. Just a small amount. And then if we go back on the timeline and click play, we can kind of see the tiger rotating and doing all this good stuff. Right? So we just want to set the Bezier curves. I thought you could press Control A, right click on it. But there seems to be no option to do like um, set Bezier curves to all of them at the same time. That's quite annoying. So we'll left click on this one, hold down the shift key, click on this one. You, I don't think it matters which one you select, right? You can right click on this one, go to, I think if you click on the first one, let's see. Yeah, you have to click on the keyframe. So let's right click on the first one and then go to interpolation and we'll set it to, um, you can set it to auto Bezier or Bezier. Doesn't really matter, but I think we set it to auto Bezier. We'll click this one, hold down the shift key and then we'll right click. Let's just try and right click on it. And we'll set it to auto Bezier and then we'll click on this one and then we'll hold down the shift key and click on this one. And then we'll right click and set it to auto bezier. So let's just check that. Let's go back here and click play. And then it kind of slows down gradually at, towards the end, right? And I believe auto bezier, um, it, it kind of gradually, it kind of s slows it at the beginning as well and towards the end. Whereas bezier will only slow it towards the end. So I think that's the difference between, we just right click on them. Um, Bezier will just go, it will just play the normal speed and then it will slow down towards the end. And Auto Bezier, I believe, slows at the beginning and then slows down at the end. Continuous Bezier, I'm going to have to read up a little bit about these, but I guess you guys can go and like read up about these options. Just Google search, you know, Adobe Premiere Pro and these different options and you can learn a little bit more about them. You only really use them in during, during images anyway, so um, you can go and experiment with that as well yourselves. But you can also add them to video clips. So video clips, you can also add um, uh, like zooms and do different things with the video content as well. You know, you can add time, time codes or uh, keyframes to video content as well. So you could zoom in on this, this leopard as it's moving across. In fact, let's do that. So let's click on the video clip so it's, these, these options are not just for images, you can do them on video clips. So let's click on this video clip. Let's drag to the beginning of the timeline. And there's a transition here. So let's just go to um, scale. So we'll click scale. And then we'll go to the end of the clip here. And then we'll go back in one frame by pressing the left arrow key. And we'll add a keyframe here. And then let's, uh, let's zoom in a little bit, right? Just a small amount. So now, as this uh, cheetah plays, the video clip's playing, but we're also zooming in on that video clip. You may not notice it so much because the video is moving, but we're actually zooming in. Maybe if we click here on this uh, keyframe and zoom in quite a lot, like really a lot, then maybe we'll see that a bit more clearly when we play it. Now you can see the... Uh, video clip zooming in that looks pretty cool as well so as it's playing forward it's kind of zooming in as well um onto this this uh cheetah i think that looks pretty cool anyway right so we'll leave it zooming in on this one so let's add some transitions quickly so let's go to cross dissolve and we'll add one to this um these images here so now when we play it this cheetah is zooming in and then it's going to transition and then rather than having a still image, we've got this nice little like moving image of this tiger. And we've got this other one here as well. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's move across the timeline using the mouse wheel. And I'm going to click on this little folder option here. I'm going to go back to videos. And we've used the elephant and we've used this cheetah. Um, let's see. So we've got planet Earth. And these are more like landscape sort of stuff, right? So let's drag this one here onto the timeline. 
and we've got like this uh, this water thing going on here on these cars or whatever it is so let's just right click on this and go to unlink and then we can delete the um, the audio there we can select it and delete it and then we've got this kind of like time lapse going on here right now obviously these images and this video content don't really sort of transition very well in terms of the actual content itself but that's not really relevant here I'm just trying to show you how to do the editing of content so here um, what we'll do is we want to make this um, five seconds right so let's just double click on it we'll leave it at the beginning of the timeline here so we'll start at zero frames and we'll mark it in there and then we'll just scrub across to five seconds which will be around here and then we're going to mark it out here so we've got a five second duration I'm going to click on this video clip and then we want to do some color correction to it so let's try some color correction okay so what I'm going to do is double click on this video clip and that will show it in this timeline on or, or show it in this media player here over on this left hand side we've got the original content on the right hand side so we want to do some color correction so they look they look pretty much the same right now yeah so try and pick a frame um, if we scrub across a little bit let's see roughly around here they'll be exactly the same position on the timeline roughly the same position right let's try and get them looking roughly the same and then you can left click on this video content down here and then go to Lumetri color here Lumetri color this option right here Lumetri color and inside here you can do simple things just like auto and when you click auto you'll see some changes made so Premiere Pro will automatically color correct this for you so if I click reset you can see the clouds are a little bit darker and things are a little bit darker when I click auto things just lighten up slightly but then you can tr you can play around with this thing so if you want to make it more like a like a like a you know like a, some, some add some more sort of color to the clouds and make it more yellow to like the temperature this is more warm you can add warmth to it or you can make it more cold and it can be like icy cold you can add more blue to it it's like the temperature right so you can adjust that as well so maybe we'll make it a bit more blue and then you can change the tint so you can add more tint so you can make it even more blue if you go quite extreme then it goes to like purple if you go to the other side it's going to go quite green but you can like play around with these settings just to see what looks good for you now whenever you do color correction it's down to your own preference right what do you want that video clip to look like it's not there's no right or wrong answer to color correction that's what you have to remember it's what do you want that video clip to look like to the person that's viewing it a bit like a film director right there may be like if you watch matrix or some matrix films there's a lot of green in it like a lot of green here in, in sort of matrix films right that's what the director wanted so you can use, use the saturation here this is adding more color this is removing color so you can see it kind of grayscales here you've got some other sort of options that you can tweak here you can tweak the contrast you can uh, tweak the blacks you can make the blacks very very dark and you can make them more lighter uh, or you can just click the auto and auto will kind of correct it the best that it can um, so it's, this is really some basic options there are other sort of more advanced um, options for color correction but this is probably the easiest one for you to to work with right here so I would say just like select auto see what it looks like and if you want to add a bit more temperature you can make it maybe make it a bit more warm and then you can bump up the saturation and give it a bit more color so I'm just going to leave it like this I'm not saying this is correct but I'm just showing you how to manipulate the colors so if you were to if you did some filming on your on your phone or your your camcorder and you filmed maybe at two different points in the day and one was very light and it was a little bit darker in the day later but these sort of video content was supposed to sequence then you could use color correction to kind of get them to match a little bit more clearly now if you had two different video clips let's say this one over here you could double click on this one and you've got like the video clip over here and then you can move across the timeline to here you could have two different video clips right you could double click on one of them in here you can see the video clip here of when you film during the morning and you can see one when you film during the evening you might want to kind of do some color correction or matching across the two of them like this okay so let's go ahead and click on effects controls and we've got this video clip here I'm not going to do much with it apart from add a transition so let's close down Lumetri color go to effects and then we'll go to cross dissolve and drag and drop that onto the timeline and then we can go back here and we've got the tiger and then we've got this kind of scene here transitioning okay let's go ahead and finish off adding these video clips so we've got this one here uh, we've got some more um, images to add as well so 
I think we'll just try and use as much as we can. So let's leave this video clip here. Let's just bounce back to the images. Let's grab this snake. Let's drag it onto the timeline. Let's grab this snake. Let's drag it onto the timeline. I'm going to press Control and A. Control A will select all of the content. I'm going to go to sequence and close gap. Just being a bit lazy there, it will close the gaps. Let's scrub across here. And then here we can see the other one, right? So I'm just going to click on this one, right click on it and go to uh, set to frame size. And that will just zoom it a little bit. Let's click on this one, right click and then go to set to frame uh, set to frame size as well. This one seems okay. So we'll click on this one and we can see the gaps down the side. So let's click on it. In fact, we can click on it and then go, should be able to see the effects controls. In fact, the reason why we can't see effects controls is because everything is selected at the moment, right? So we want to left click. We might have made a mistake here. Let's see. Right. When we did that, um, we made a mistake here. So I'm going to press control Z. Control Z. And I'll explain the mistake that we made. When I selected everything and I right clicked and did scale to frame or set to frame size, it also did that for these uh, these video clips here. Yeah? These two here or the, the, the images. So you have to be a bit careful. When you press Control A and you right click and perform an action, you're applying it to all of the, the clips in here. So just be aware of that. So what you need to do is once you've selected everything and closed the gaps, you need to left click outside and then you can select those individual elements and manipulate them separately. So let's just see everything is still correct, right? It's all looking good. But with this, um, with this snake, you can see it's zoomed in quite a lot. So I want to left click on it once and then right click and then do scale to frame size. And you can probably see some, we'll probably zoom in on this picture afterwards, but we we'll left click on this one or we'll move to the timeline, left click on it, right click and then scale to frame size. And then we can do our little zoom and whatever else we need to do to these uh, particular um, images. So let's click on the first one. Here we can see the effects control. So let's do this a little bit quicker. First thing I want to do is just grab the scale and scale it in to something like this. And then I'm going to add a keyframe here. So let's, uh, in fact, let's go to the beginning of the timeline first for this uh, image here. So we'll drag this handle to the beginning. Let's click scale. And I think I want it to kind of scale and move up, right? So I'm going to click position, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to rotate this one. So I'm going to drag it all the way to the end of the timeline and we'll see this frame here. So I'm going to use the left arrow to go back one frame just to make sure we're on the very last frame of this image and then click the add the uh, the keyframes here. And then we're going to go to, we're going to left click on this left arrow here. That takes us to the very first keyframe. And then I want to, so I want to scale, right? So do I want to zoom in or do I want to zoom out? So in this example, I want to zoom out. So we need to scale in more. And then I want to move this um, up. So this is left and right, and this is up and down. So I want to move this up a little bit to maybe like here, something like this. So now when we press the space bar to play, we can see it's kind of zooming like this. But we might give it a bit of rotation as well, make it a bit interesting, right? So let's click rotation, and then we'll click the add keyframe here at the beginning. Let's click on this arrow that takes us to the end of these keyframes, and we can add another keyframe here. And then we'll go back to the first keyframe and we'll rotate it slightly maybe we'll rotate it to rotate it to the this direction only like six degrees yeah and then we'll left click on this keyframe hold down the shift key left click on this one go to right click interpolation and we'll do auto bezier and we'll do it the same for the other ones as well so just repeat that auto bezier left click here hold down the shift key left click here right click and then auto bezier I'm sure there's an easier way to do that, but if I figure it out, I'll make another tutorial about that. So we click play. Now we can see it's kind of zooming and doing its thing. We want to add a cross dissolve. So let's drag this cross dissolve at the beginning of this snake. Let's go to the timeline across here. We see this other snake. Let's click on it. So now we're manipulating the, the effects controls for this image. Let's drag it to the beginning. And normally I just set the scale, right? So we don't want to scale. What do we want to do? We probably... Um, have this one go from top to bottom because the other one kind of zoomed 
from from the top down so let's have this one zoom i don't know we'll, we'll, we'll do something let's zoom in a little bit right now and i want to kind of move it to the to the center a bit more right to the center it's all doing a black background so we don't really see these black bars down the side so this this kind of works to our advantage let's go ahead and add a keyframe at the beginning for these ones and we'll add one for the rotation and let's move all the way to the end and we'll go back one keyframe using the left arrow key and then we'll add keyframes for all of those and i'm going to show you something slightly different i'm going to go to the middle to the middle of this timeline and i'm going to add a keyframe here as well so now we've got extra keyframes in the middle so i'm going to go to the beginning and i want to rotate this slightly so i'm just going to rotate it this way slightly and we're going to scale in slightly and I want to move it up slightly. Let's move it upwards. Let's move it upwards here. So these sets of keyframes inherited what the original keyframes were at the beginning before we manip manipulated them. So as we move across, you can see it kind of um, gets here, but then between here and here, it's going to be exactly the same settings in the keyframe. So I want to continue that rotation. So I'm going to go to the end keyframe and I'm going to rotate it a bit more like this way almost rotate it so like the heads the snake head is almost like horizontal like this so let's see what happens now so you can see it's zooming in like this and then it's kind of just rotating but we want to do a bit of a zoom as well so let's go to here let's zoom in some more and let's bring it down let's move it to the center a bit let's try and center it out a little bit and then move it down to roughly around let's try and get it like centered in the screen like here so let's see how that works. So now you can see it zooming in and then it rotates like this. So that's kind of setting two different sets of keyframes, one for this first part and then the second part is set up separately. So let's, um, let's see, there must be an easier way. Okay, there's an easier way. If you just click on, um, I wonder if we can do it from here. So if you just click on position, it will select all of the keyframes automatically. Now you can just right click and then set the auto bezier so you can click on scale and all the keyframes are highlighted blue so you don't have to left click and hold down and shift all that business you can just now right click on them and set to auto bezier and you can click on rotation right click auto bezier so that's a bit quicker than having to click on the first keyframe hold down the shift key and select all of them you can just click on position it will highlight all of them anyway so let's just see how that works Let's add our transition as well. Add our transition. Click the play button. Now you can see that rotating and doing its good things. Okay. So we've used those snakes. We've got gorillas. We've got eagles. Let's go back to our video clips. Let's go back to um, video here. And let's drag across the timeline to some blank space over here. And we've used, um, I don't think we've used this one. We've used this one and we haven't used this one. So let's drag this onto the timeline. Now you can see this video clip is quite small. So now either I downloaded it too small or it was originally too small. So this is a good example where you can click on the video clip, right click on it and then scale to frame size. And you can still see there's some black bars down the side, right? So let's go and click on that video clip and then we can scale in. And we can get rid of those black bars by scaling in and we can just scrub across this and we can see what's going on here right it's this uh this sort of um time lapse going on here so i'm going to double click on this video clip so we can grab it here i'm just going to use the cutting in and cut out this is kind of easy way to do it as well so let's just cut in and cut out five seconds All right, let's see five seconds it will be right here i'm going to use the left arrow key to get it exactly on five seconds here and i'm going to mark it out and then that's the video clip done. So let's just see it um, on this timeline. Let's have a look. Let's just drag this. I can see both video clips side by side. And let's just click on it. And let's just have a little play with the Lumetri color. Let's just auto correct it. And you can see it brightens up a bit. But that may be not what you want. But we can try and kind of change it some. It's colors here and stuff like that. Maybe we can add some tint to it, make it more purple. Now it's a bit more vibrant, right? It looks a bit better than the blue one, don't you think? It's got more sort of presence to it. 
so that's up to you you don't have to change it but i've kind of done a little quick color correction there let's go to effects and let's add a cross dissolve and then let's go back let's click play and then we can kind of see what's going on here between them right okay so let's just see okay that's fine that's good so we've got that one done let's go back to our uh, images and we'll grab the eagle let's drag that onto the timeline we'll grab the other eagle and drag that one onto the timeline and now we've got these two eagles but you can see they zoomed out quite far so what we can do is left click and drag over both of them so if we if we left click we deselect everything hold down the left mouse button we can select only these two um, images then we can right click on them and go scale to size frame size and now we can scale both of them at the same time rather than having to do them one by one this one looks pretty good it's scaled pretty well but this one is a bit zoomed in so let's click on it in fact let's left click outside and double left click on the image in fact we don't want to do that we want to go to effects controls right so you can see the little tab up here if you can't see it click here and go to effects controls and then let's go to the beginning of the timeline for this image and then we can zoom in a little bit so scale in so we've got the bird here let's bring it down a little bit let's just see maybe to around here and let's add some keyframes so let's do position scale and rotation and then we'll go to the end of the video clip or the image and let's go back one frame so we're on the very end frame of this one let's add some keyframes and then the first thing i want to do is kind of have the bird rotate uh this direction this direction a little bit so let's rotate it and if you rotate quite a lot and then you see like a, a black gap up here right what you can do is scale in a little bit more and you can bring it down and then maybe rotate we do just how much rotation do we put 10 10 percent or 10 degrees let's rotate it a little bit less so let's see right so we just got a simple rotation i'm not going to do too much with this one i don't think i'm going to do anything else with this so let's just um click on rotation right click on it click on rotation right click on the keyframe and we'll set it to auto bezier and that's fine and then we can click on this one and it's kind of set up already for us but it would be nice if that bird was kind of um maybe moving left to right in this fit option here you can set it to something like 50 percent or you can set it to something like 10 percent and you can kind of see if anything's sitting outside of the frame or what's going on so if we go to this one here let's see this is sometimes a nice way to see if there's any sort of black borders or anything that you can't really see if you click fit it will just fit it into this panel here so that's what this option here does basically uh, let's click on this one let's go to let's, let's click on this one effects controls and you can see we can't really move it too much because this one is pretty it's pretty uh it's pretty good as it is right now i'm going to zoom in a little bit let's go to the beginning of the timeline let's bring this bird down a little bit like this and then i want to uh, rotate it just a tiny amount like four degrees this way let's bring it up so if you set the first frame exactly as you want it so always set the first frame then you can go ahead and add your position scale and your rotation and then you can move across the timeline let's go to the end let's go back one keyframe to make sure we're right at the very end add your keyframes here and then now you can manipulate it however you want so let's say if we get rid of this rotation let's just set it to zero degrees that will remove the rotation and then we can move the bird across the screen a little bit let's bring it down a little bit and let's zoom it out a little bit something like this and now if we click play we can kind of see the bird zooming out and doing all this good stuff that's what we wanted that looks pretty good so let's go ahead and we can drag this handle to zoom in and out right this one down here just like the the other one down here and let's just zoom out 
so we can see those keyframes. Let's click on the position. Let's right click on it. Or click on position. Right click on the keyframe. And let's set it to auto bezier. Do the same with scale. And then do the same with the rotation. And then press Control S to save. Remember to save your work. Let's add a transition here. And let's add one here. And then let's go back here. We can see our time lapse, and then it will transition to the eagle. And then it will transition again to this other eagle. And I think all we've got is gorillas and one more video clip. So let's go back to videos. So we're kind of alternating between video content and um, images, right? So let's drag this video content on the timeline. And this one actually has audio. So you know it has audio because these UV meters are moving. So as I scrub across this timeline, it's kind of got the sound of water in the background, right? So if you can see the UV meters, those little green bars, they're moving up and down. So as I scrub across this timeline, I know there's actual audio on this video clip. So I'm going to click on it, right click on it, and then go to unlink. And I'm going to select that video or the audio content only and delete it. I don't really want that sound in the background because we're going to add some music afterwards, right? We're going to add some music. So let's just do this quickly. Let's double click on it. Let's go to the beginning of the timeline. We'll mark it in and we'll mark it out at five seconds. Let's do five seconds here. And remember, you can use the arrow keys to, to, to get it exactly five seconds. Then we'll mark it out. So that's our five seconds for this uh, thing here. Let's do across dissolve. Let's click on this video clip. And go to the effects controls. Let's go to the beginning and we'll add a keyframe for the scale. And we're going to leave the position as it is. We're going to scrub all the way across the timeline. Let's go to the very last keyframe, add one for scale as well. And we're going to zoom in slightly. That's it, just a small zoom. So then when we check it, we can now see the water doing its thing, but then the video clip is also slowly zooming in. Let's click here and go back to images. And what we can do is click on this scale and we can right click on it and set it to uh, auto bezier. And then we can go back to our images and we've got gorilla. So let's drag gorilla one number one. Let's drag gorilla number two. Let's press control A. Let's go to sequence and let's go to close gaps. If I can find it, here it is, close gaps. And then let's left click to deselect everything. Click on this gorilla. It's quite zoomed in a lot. Click on this one and it's zoomed in a lot. So let's select both those images. Left click and drag over both images. Right click on them and then set them to scale to frame size so now we're going to scale up this one is zoomed in quite a lot so we need to click on it or well, let's left click outside then click on the image and then you'll see the effects controls when both of these are selected if you click on it you won't see no effects controls because you can't edit both effects for at the same time you can only edit one of them at one time so if you left click you deselect them when you click on the first one then you'll see the effects controls we want to zoom in onto this gorilla so let's zoom in on the gorilla uh, let's grab this timeline and drag it across and then we'll add a position keyframe Let's add a position and a scale. We don't really want any rotation on this one And it will drag across the timeline to the end You're going to see this one here. Let's left use the left arrow to go back So we'll make sure we're on the very end keyframe and then we're going to add keyframes here And we're going to go back to the beginning by clicking on this left arrow This one here moves us to the very first keyframe and then we've got scale and position so let's move the position across slightly and let's scale it let's scale it in slightly let's move it across a little bit more we can even move it down move it down slightly so then let's check that and now we can see the gorilla doing its thing let's go to the other gorilla let's click it and then let's go ahead and scale this one in and then we can move it down some and then we can move it so that we try and get it in the center of the frame a little bit and um, this one's a bit rubbish here yeah? so let's click on this this first image this one here let's go back and let's add some rotation because uh, it's a bit rubbish so let's click on that keyframe and then we'll add another keyframe here let's go back and on this first keyframe let's just give it a slight rotation rotation always adds a little bit more to the image especially still images right 
if you're just zooming in that it's a bit boring so try and do that let's click on rotation let's right click on the keyframe and set to uh, auto bezier let's try one thing here okay so you can click on position you can click on position hold down the shift key and click on scale and then it selects all four of these keyframes you see then you can right click go to interpretation and then select auto bezier so you can actually do it to all keyframes at the same time that's the way to do it i know i'll figure it out sooner or later so there you go and then we're on this one so let's click on this gorilla let's add the position scale and rotation let's go to the very end keyframe and let's or the end the end of the video the image let's go back and then add our keyframes here and remember, when we click this left arrow, whichever left arrow we click on this keyframe is taking us simply back to the first keyframe. So let's click it. That takes us back to the very first keyframe. Let's scale in a little bit. Let's move it to the right a little bit. Let's rotate it, I think, yeah, this way slightly. Let's give it a bit more rotation. And let's see, let's click play. And we can see that kind of gradually doing its rotation thing so let's go ahead and click on position here the text position let's hold down the shift key and click on scale and then hold down the shift key and click on rotation so we should have all these keyframes selected let's zoom out a little bit you can see they're all selected and we should be able to just right click go to here and click auto bezier and it will do it for all of them Okay, so that's all of the images done. Let's go back to the video. That's all of the videos added as well. The last thing I want to do, let's just zoom across this, let's scrub across this timeline. I want to add this uh, planet Earth. So let's drag planet Earth here again. So when we go to the first planet Earth, we can see that it's rotating. Uh, another thing, if you want to move across the timeline, you can hold down the, the, uh, the cursor up here, this blue cursor, you can left click, and drag and then you can drag off the edge and it will move across the timeline as well this way that's another way to move across the timeline this one's rotating in this direction i know someone's gonna be quite annoyed with me but what i'm going to do is click on this video clip at the end so this is the same planet clip right the same one i'm going to click on it uh, in fact i'm going to double click on it and it ends at 16 frame let's just start from start from the beginning so let's mark it in at the beginning and then we're going to mark it out at five seconds let's go to five seconds here let's mark it out and i'm going to right click on this go to speed and duration and select reverse and then click ok so in the original clip the planet is rotating correctly and on this end clip it's going to be rotating in the opposite direction it's going the the wrong way around you can think of it that way okay let's go ahead and just finish off adding the transition so let's go to cross dissolve and we want to cross dissolve um on these these images here right so let's add a cross dissolve here at the beginning let's add one here as well and then let's add one to the beginning of the planets at the end right so we've got it rotating the other way around but we want to add one at the very end as well so that when the planet plays it will fade in and then it's going to fade out at the very end okay so at present all we've done is add images to a single timeline can you see that so we've got this one straight line with content on the timeline we can actually stack images or stack content on top of each other so we can do that as well so i just want to show you a quick example so what i want to do is go to my web browser and i'll put a link to this particular image in the youtube description so just like a little subscribe button so imagine you're creating some content for youtube and you want to show this little subscribe thing possibly somewhere on your video content then we can go ahead and do that so let's click free download and we just download it as 1920 by 1080 that's fine we'll click download we'll select this option here we've got to fill out this little capture um let's have a look verify and click download and then we want to drag this image into our folder. So remember, we need to keep our content organized. So we're going to assets and it's not, it, really it's an image. So we should put it in here. We should make a folder for it. You can drag it into the root if you want. So just we'll call this like general. Let's just call it general. And we can have like some general content in here. And um, we'll just rename this because it's a bit, it's 
it's not great is it so this is a png file that we're downloading so it's already got transparency added to the png file so if we go back to premiere pro and if we go to um, our images bin this is the one with the images right all the images are here we can go ahead and drag and drop this subscribe into here so when we drag and drop this we can drag and drop it above other content can you see we can drag and drop it above and whenever we drag and drop above it will sit above the content now can you see sitting above we don't really want it on the intro so we're going to drag it across the timeline a little bit and maybe have it somewhere like here but it's it's really big and it's in the it's kind of in the way it doesn't really make sense to have it so large right here so let's click on that um that image the subscribe image let's go to effects controls and we can scale it first of all let's scale it all the way down to something like this and then let's move it to the right let's drag it all the way over here and then maybe we'll have it sitting down here in the bottom left hand corner something like this so if we now move across this timeline we can kind of see this subscribe appear here at this point but i'm going to add a keyframe for its position and i'm going to add a keyframe for its uh let's see okay add one for our opacities here let's do our opacity in a minute so keyframe for position and i want to add one for the opacity so i'm going to click on this drop down and then click opacity here so I'm going to add a keyframe for, it's, think of it like it's visibility, right? So I want to go to the end of the timeline, or the end of this clip. Uh, let's see. That will be here. On this position here, I want to also add a keyframe for its position and its uh, opacity. So I want to move now to the middle of the timeline, the middle part somewhere roughly around the middle and I'm going to add a keyframe here and I'm going to add a keyframe for the opacity as well and then I'm going to scrub across a little bit more and I'm going to add another keyframe for in fact let's go a little bit further I'm going to add another keyframe for the opacity and another one for its position so let's go to the beginning of the time timeline here and we're on the very first keyframe for its position and I want it to be off the screen so I'm going to grab this uh, this handle here and drag it off of the screen just off the screen so between these two positions you can see like it's sliding in right like this and then the opacity I want to set it to zero here on the first keyframe so now when it moves in it's going to fade in like this it's going to be static for this duration it's going to be still and then on the end I want to do the opposite action so I want to grab it again and slide it off of the the uh, the screen and then I want to set its opacity back down to zero right so we kind of got keyframes that are active here then it's static in between these keyframes and then it's active again so I'm going to click on position click on the position here and then click on the word opacity here hold hold down the shift key so you select all of the keyframes and we can right click go to the auto bezier so let's see that in action let's press the play button now it's going to zoom in it's going to do its thing it's going to pause and then it's going to zoom back out again so that's how you can add overlays add graphics on top of other content inside of your timeline so that's quite important to, to learn and understand that yeah okay so it would be nice if we had some sort of introduction text right some sort of title so as we scrub across this timeline we can see like the planet earth spinning and we want some sort of title to show in this intro section so I'm just going to like, move to the middle of this intro section and I'm going to click on the text tool here can you see there's a text tool the letter T so you can press the letter T on your keyboard and then we're just going to drag and drop this onto uh, the in fact we're not going to drag and drop it we're going to click it click it once and if you hold down the left mouse button this type tool in this vertical text so you can type from top to bottom but you can also type from left to right so we want type tool so we're going to click it and then click anywhere on here left click and then we can type something in so you can see there's a new element being added at the top here it's called graphic graphic here um, and we're just going to type in planet planet earth nice and simple and then we're going to click on the move tool so once we've done that let's just check um, what we want to do 
we want to sort this text out, we want to change its formatting, do whatever we need to do. So the best way to do that is probably drag this text all the way to the beginning of the timeline and then drag the cursor all the way to the beginning. Now you can see the text just on its own. Yeah? And if we click on this text and if we look carefully down here in the effects controls, let's see, we've got this, this word here, it says text planet Earth written here. And if we expand that, we can see the font style here. So we click on the drop down, you can click on a different font style from here, or I believe you can also uh, just roll your mouse wheel. So you can roll your mouse wheel over this and it will go through all the different font styles that you have. I kind of like the one, the default one that was on this, this font style. And then for the size, we can drag it and zoom right in. So we want it to be a lot bigger, right? So I'm setting it to 245. Um, and then if the font has different options, it might have, may have like different formatting, like italic and regular. I'm going to leave it on this bold condensed uh, option. Then you can set it all to uppercase here if you want it to be all uppercase. It's a bit off the screen, so let's click on the move tool and drag it more towards the center of the screen. And we want to, you know, you can set it to like uppercase. You can set it to small caps like this. That looks quite nice where the first letter is capital and the other ones are still capitals but lower versions of that um, then you've got italic then you've got like your bolded text if you want it to be bolded out I kind of like it like this or like this I think this looks better yeah like uppercase but lowercase um, it's all uppercase but some of the words are smaller or the letters are smaller you can go around and experiment with this you can change like the character spacing uh, I think this is the character spacing here like the gap between the words or the letters. So I might increase that a little bit to like 16, just so there's a little bit more space between the letters. So make sure your text looks exactly the way that you want it to look. You can also change the fill option. So you can click here, you can change the font color. You can see the font color being changed there. But I'm gonna leave it as white. And then you can click on stroke. So you can tick this option here. And then you can add an outline around it. So you can click on here. You can make the outline red, for example, or you can make it whatever color you choose to make it, right? You can make it green, planet Earth, kind of green works, doesn't it? A little bit, um, something like green. You can't really see it because it's on a black background, but if we move across, you'll see the green outline now a little bit more clearly. And then you can change the thickness of that green outline, change the thickness right here. And there's probably some other options here, like if you want it inside of the text, if you want it on the center line of the text or if you want it on the outside edge of the text. I don't really want any um, any uh, strokes, uh, but you can even add more strokes. So you can add one stroke, then you can add a, like a double stroke by clicking this plus sign. You can add a third stroke. You can change its color to something else. You can have many like outlines around your text, um, these different strokes, but I'm gonna disable all of them because I don't really want any of them. Uh, you can change the background I'm not quite sure about this. Okay, so you can have like a, an overlay background behind it just in case you want to emphasize it in some way. And you can go around and play with these settings and its opacity and whether you want it to have rounded edges and all that good stuff. So I'll leave you to go and experiment with this. You can put drop shadows as well. Drop shadows might be nice. Um, but I'll leave you to go and play with all of that. And what we want to do is make sure this, the text is the right size first. Because what we're going to do is click on this little circle. I don't know if you can see this. Let me move it to here so you can see it. So in the bottom left hand corner, there's a little circle. This is like the registration or the origin point. So I'm going to click on that and drag it holding down the control key and it will snap into the center of the text. So now that origin point is in the center. If you were to rotate this text, it would rotate around that origin point. So when I rotate it, can you see it's rotating around the center point? So as default, if I do control Z, control Z, as default is right down here in the bottom left hand corner. So when I rotate, as default it rotates around that pivot point. And it's a bit rubbish, isn't it? And I'm not quite sure why Premiere Pro doesn't just center it, but for whatever reason that's the way it works. So I'm going to press Control Z and I'm going to left click on it and then hold down the control key to snap it to the center. So now it's centered. So if you ever want to rotate your text or do anything with your text, at least you're going to rotate around the center point. Then we can click on the text itself and hold down the control key to snap it to the center of the video content. Now the origin point and the actual text itself are snapped to the center 
um, of the content, which is good. Just, yeah, it's very good. So let's animate this, um, this text. Right now, we don't want it to play straight away. We don't want it to be visible straight away. We want it to be visible after this um, transition happens, right? So if we grab this timeline and zoom right in, let's zoom right in so we can just about see all of this first uh, piece of content. And we can see that the transition or this cross dissolve for this, this planet Earth or the planet in the background, it lasts one second. So I don't want, want my video clip to, or I don't want this text to show until one second. So I'm gonna click on it and then hold down my left mouse button on the left hand side and I'm gonna drag it in so it snaps at this point. So now we can see that this is gonna fade in and then we wanna fade in this, uh, this planet Earth and then eventually we wanna fade it out. But we wanna fade it out one second. So when we know that this video clip, this one here is five seconds long, so we're gonna scrub back to four seconds, four seconds, and we're gonna grab this handle and drag it this way. So let's drag it to four seconds. So now it will fade in, you'll see the planet Earth, the planet Earth will do its thing, and then it's gonna fade out, and then this will transition. So let's press Control S to save our work. And now we can decide what do we do with this planet Earth text. So let's click on it, and we can minimize this text when we set it all up properly. Um, and let's just minimize all of this stuff here for a minute. This graphic here, the position and the scale and the rotation. So this is gonna be for this image, I believe. So let's just rotate it. So we can see that we're rotating. It's called a graphic in here, but it's actually text content, right? So we can change its position, we can change its scale, and we can change its rotation. I'm not sure if we wanna rotate, but we might rotate it slightly. But remember now we can rotate on the origin point, this middle point. It's called the anchor point actually in um, Premiere Pro. You can see the anchor point here. That's what it's called. So what should we do? Too many choices. Let's go to the beginning and let's do a scale position and let's just do a rotation for the fun of it. And let's go to the very end. In fact, let's go to the, the middle. So the middle should be, uh, let's see, this is five seconds long. So let's set it to around two around 212 will be around halfway point, right? Two seconds and 12 frames around here. So we're gonna add keyframes here as well. And then we'll add some keyframes at the very end. Let's just go back one frame. We'll add some keyframes here. Now we can decide what we wanna do. So I think the first thing we should do is, um, let's change its position. I want it to be higher up, so I'm gonna move it upwards a little bit and then I want to scale out so now it's, it's going to kind of zoom in like this right and what we want to do is we want to set opacity as well so we're going to click here and we're going to set an opacity keyframe and we're gonna click on this little arrow here that takes us to the middle set of keyframes. And we're gonna set an opacity here as well. And then we're gonna click on this one here that takes us to the end set of keyframes. And we're gonna set opacity here as well. So now we have this thing just zoom in like this down, but we want to rotate it. So I'm gonna rotate it slightly this way, only maybe about seven, seven, something like this. So it's gonna rotate like this. Yeah? Now we can set the opacity all the way down to zero. So when we click play, it's gonna kind of zoom in like this. Um, and then we want it to zoom in and zoom out kind of in the opposite direction. Do something similar, but on the end keyframes, we want to go to the end one, and I'm gonna scale it to make it a bit bigger. And the position, I wanna bring it, in fact, I wanna bring it down a bit and I want to continue that rotation in the same direction, I believe. Let's test it. Maybe we'll make it a bit more exaggerated. Uh, it was f it was seven degrees at the on the, on the intro. I'm going to make it 14 on the outro, on the way out. And then I'm going to set the opacity all the way down. And let's see what happens. So it kind of zooms in here, and then it kind of zooms out. It doesn't zoom out very well, does it? So let's see what's going on here. Um, let's see. I 
think uh, let's see yeah I'm not convinced about this end part so let's go to these middle keyframes everything I kind of like this at the beginning this is all fine so I think this rotation is no good so let's let's get rid of this rotation here uh, let's see the rotation set to 14 let's set it to 0 and then on this end keyframe right here let's just set the opacity a little bit higher so we can see it so we can actually see the content now on this end keyframe because if you set it to zero you can't see what's going on i want to scale it in scale it out more make it bigger and i'm going to bring it it's not i want to move it left and right i want to move it down a little bit more here let's set the opacity all the way back down again and let's just check it I think that's okay. I think that's okay. So let's press, let's left click on position, hold down the shift key, click on scale. Let's see. Uh, position, hold down the shift key. It's not really letting me select them all for some strange reason. Okay, I'm just going to click on position, right click on it, go to the auto bezier. For some reason it's not letting me select all of them at the same time like before, but it's fine. We'll just do it this way. Okay, right click, auto bezier. Let's see. That's good. Let's copy this. So, what I want to do is go to the move tool or the selection tool, click on this. Um, this uh what, what's it called this one's not set to auto bezier let's say to auto bezier this one here the opacity let's click on this and press Control c to copy so Control c will copy this particular um text content but you can also copy uh videos and audio and other types of elements right i'm gonna hold down the alt key on my keyboard the alt key and use the mouse wheel to zoom right out I want to go right to the end of this keyframe here, or this, this timeline, and I'm going to press Control V, and we're going to have a problem here. So I'm going to show you. So I'm going to press Control V. In fact, it worked out okay. Sometimes when you cut and paste, if you're not, if the, if the timeline is not selected properly, the element on the timeline, then it won't work. So I kind of explain that maybe in in a moment. Let's try it. Let's just sort this out first, and then we'll kind of explain that afterwards. So let's just move this. So we want this uh, this to start at the beginning or the end of this transition here. So it kind of sits nicely now, yeah? So we're going to have this um, Planet Earth used at the end as well. So effectively, all we've, all we've really done, let's just zoom right out. We've copied this one, this text here, and we've just pasted it over here. And I just want to try one thing quickly. Because uh, you might have a problem here later in the future. So let's just show you an example. Let's just... Um, Let's, in this blank space over here, let's just drag this eagle over here, right? And then let's just drag um, this uh, this picture as well, here. So I'm going to click on this first picture, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to click over here, and I'm going to paste it. And it's going to paste directly on top of the other image. And you see that it's cut this image here, and it's pasted on top of it. What if you want to paste above this one? For whatever reason, maybe it's text or maybe it's some other type of content. What you need to do is click on the timeline, activate this timeline, this one, so it will go blue, and then click here, this this V1. This is telling you what is the active layer. Now when you copy this one and paste, uh, let's see, let's disable this timeline, this one below. It should, it should paste above. It doesn't seem to want to. Let's copy this one copy it and it should, should
should really paste above, but it doesn't seem to do that for some reason. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Normally, if you select these two here, this is the source patching for inserting and overwriting. And this is the toggle track targeting for this track. So I want to copy this one and paste it above here. It doesn't seem to work for some reason. Let's just save this. Um, I might have to look at that and maybe make a separate video why it's not working. I don't know if it's this version of Premiere, but that's normally how I do it before. So it's just a bit strange. So we'll delete this. We'll ignore that. The, the other way to obviously do it is you could um, you could just leave this active. Then you could you could drag content onto the timeline. You can just drag it above as well. Yeah, you can just just that's kind of another way to resolve that. But normally, if you select this timeline, if you copy something and paste it, normally it pastes it above automatically. Um, but for some reason, it's not working at this very minute. But that we won't worry about that. We've done enough uh, here so far so i think this is pretty good let's just save this and we're missing one last thing which is going to be the audio okay so let's go and click on our little folder and we'll go to audio remember you could have loads of audio tracks you could have had like lots of voiceovers and different content let's drag this onto the timeline and i'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear this because it's playing from my computer but it's already got a faded it's already faded in so if you look at this audio it starts from nothing and it kind of fades in automatically so whoever created this audio they faded it in for us automatically right so let's just click at the beginning here and you can see the uv meter is moving it's kind of this ambient music it's quite relaxed and chilled out you might be able to hear it now and if i move my mouse here you can see where the audio is peaking it's peaking at around minus six and if that's too loud and if you want it to be more subtle you can reduce the audio by right clicking on it and going to audio gains and right now it's peaking at minus six so that's quite loud so you can go to set gain here and set it to something like minus 12. so if i set it to minus 12 and if i play it won't go any higher than this minus 12 over here So you can manipulate the the volume. So the lower the decibel, so something like minus 20 will be quite very, very low. You'll just about be able to hear it. Something like minus six is quite loud. That's almost like the same sort of similar to my voice, you could say, uh, when you're hearing my voice. So it really depends um, how you want that audio to play. But I'm going to leave it at like minus 12 because I want it to be quite subtle. And I'm going to zoom out and then zoom into the end part of this timeline. I'm going to press the letter C to cut. And I'm going to cut the audio. Let's drag across this timeline here. I want to cut the audio right at the very, very end. Let's click the magnet tool. And we're going to cut at the very, very end here. Then I'm going to press the letter V and then click on this end video audio clip and delete it. And right now, let's just zoom in a little bit. You can see that I've cut it a little bit too short. So I can drag it to match the end of the video clip here and at the moment the problem we have is the audio clip is just going to kind of stop it's not going to fade out or do anything we want it to kind of fade out at the beginning it's faded in so what i'm going to actually do is i'm going to cut the video clip here because i want to show you how to fade in and fade out so the audio clip here i'm going to press the letter c and cut it just randomly about here somewhere and i'm going to press uh, v and then delete the beginning and I'm going to drag this all the way to the beginning here. So we've got audio that just starts straight away. And then we've got audio that kind of stops abruptly as well. So I'm going to drag this out so we can fill out this gap here. And we want to fade in audio and fade it out. So let's do that. That's quite an important skill to learn, something, some knowledge to have. So we've got video transitions here. So I'm going to go to audio transitions and then go to crossfade. And I'm going to select the exponential fade here i'm going to drag this onto the beginning of this audio clip and then if we click here and then click play it's going to fade in but it's going to fade in quite quickly there's only one second duration so i'm going to drag the exponential fade and fade it in over five second duration it's 
So it's taken five seconds from zero decibels when it's going to increase all the way up to like this minus 12 dB, right? So it's taking that long duration, that five second duration. And now we can zoom all the way out and zoom to the end of the timeline and drag this to the end. And then we can drag that for five seconds. We know it's five seconds right here because each one of our video clips is five seconds duration. And that will fade out over that period of time. So that's how you fade in audio, fade it in and out at the beginning. So I think that is pretty much it. I'm not sure what questions you might have. We've got content stacking, we've got audio, we've done all of our transitions. The next thing we really need to do is export this content. We need to export it. So I'm going to save it and we want to export it in the next uh, example. Okay, so to export our video content, we want to go to file, save as well. Let's save our work first and then we're going to go to file, export, and then we're going to say media here, export media. So when we do that, we get an option to save our content. We've got one problem here. The file name is called color matte black, right? That was the original thing that we we first imported into Premiere Pro. So let's go back to edit here, edit. And if we go back to our main uh, project, Planet Earth, we should see, let's have a look. Um, we've got the, the, the actual file here. So we've got the project file here, it's called color matte black. We don't want that. It's called here, color matte black. So we're gonna rename this to Planet Earth. All right, so we're going to rename that this one here to Planet Earth because this is the actual content that we've just created. Yeah, this one here, uh, and you'll see Planet Earth written here. So you don't have to do that, but it just means that when you export the content, it's going to have a, a better name, basically. Yeah, but it's just it's good practice to name the um, the uh, the content that you're creating uh, correctly, the sequence. Yeah. And you'll see this little icon in the corner, this little blue icon, you know that's the sequence. And this is just a color matte here. It's, it's got five seconds written here. This is like one minute, uh, 20 seconds, this one here, right? So you will know that this is the correct one. So let's see, it says one minute 20. Yep, that looks about right. And you should always check the time code here. So this is one minute, 20 seconds and four frames. We can see our content ends at one minute, 20 seconds and four frames. If you see some strange number like two, like 30, 30 minutes or something crazy like that then you might have some content all the way over here in the timeline that you don't see something over here so you want to make sure you delete uh, any extra content that you don't see afterwards so it's going to end up exporting all that extra stuff and loads of blank content here you don't want that right so always make sure um before you export that you've only got content on the timeline and there's nothing extra at the end of it sometimes you drag stuff and you forget and then it ends up exporting black frames and some extra content at the end. You don't want that. So let's go to File, Export, Media. And now we can see it's named planeteearth.mp3. You can just change the name here anyway manually if you want. I'm going to click on Browse. And I want to go to my uh, desktop here. And we're going to this Premiere Pro. We're going to save it in the root folder for where we're creating our project. We're going to save it here. Let's click Save. And then we can select the option here. So you, you can do like... HD quality, 4K, all of these different options, 720p. Normally you select high quality 1080p HD. That's if you want to just burn it to um, like a USB stick or save it on your, your phone or send it to someone, a uh, high resolution file. You can select these other file types like low bit rate for a medium or high quality. These ones here will change the, the quality of the video. You can select YouTube 1080p full HD. So that's probably the best option because then it will be compressed, but then at the same time, it will be good for uploading to YouTube. So the next thing you need to do is just go ahead and click export here, this blue button. So if we click it, it will start to prepare the content. And this shouldn't take long at all because it's only like a one minute video clip. When you're editing stuff that's like two two hours or an hour and a half, it may take, you know, a one hour video clip might may take 15, 20 minutes to export. But this one, because it's such a short time frame, it's only... Um, you know, like a, like a minute, it shouldn't take very long to do that. So that's already done, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and show you one other option. I'm gonna go ahead and click save and close down Premiere Pro. And I just wanna kind of give you an example. So imagine if we had like one folder here, then we had another project here, then we had another project here. In fact, what we'll do is we'll just create a new folder and we're gonna call it project two, for example, right? 
and what we'll do is copy this um this premiere profile let's copy it over to here make a copy of it and we just rename it to something like project two so imagine you completed two projects so sometimes when I'm making video tutorials, I'll make like seven, eight video tutorials, edit them, but then I want to export all of them. With inside Premiere Pro, you can only export one uh, piece of content at a time. But if you've got the Premiere Pro, all of the software, then you can use the media encoder. So if we open up the media encoder, just give this a second to, to open. And this is what I normally do. Normally, I will go and record five or six video tutorials. I'll edit all of them. And then at the end, I'll just drag and drop them into the media encoder for exporting. So if I open up this folder, I could drag and drop this planet Earth in here. And then that would be one example. Then I'll click uh, this source option here. And inside the source option in the drop down menu, you'll see YouTube 1080p youtube 1080p and i'll click ok then it will export as 1080p for youtube then i can open up project 2 i can drag this one and then i can go and set that one to well it's already defaulted to youtube 1080p and i can have like seven or eight different projects in here and then i can click this play button and it will export all of them for me it will do them one after the other so i could put 10 different projects press one button go and make a cup of tea sit here and it's exporting all of the videos in sequence for me just make sure you select the right directories for them where they're supposed to belong so i'm going to select both of these press ctrl a to select them right click i'm just going to remove them uh, and just say yeah just remove them we don't really want them there but i'm just showing you how to batch export content um, when you create lots of different premiere pro projects you can batch process them using the media encoder and i do that quite often i'll have 10 video tutorials drag them all in there go and do some other work and within 10 15 minutes or however long it takes they will be exported okay so that's the end of this video tutorial for adobe premiere pro 2023 i hope you find it useful don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel where you can access over 300 video tutorials on a wide range of subjects um, that's the end of this tutorial and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.